Okay, so the appendicular skeleton for BMS 171 will start with the clavicle. And here we're looking at a clavicle from an anterior point of view. So what you can see is that one of the ends quite a bit taller than the other, which is flatter. So the one that's taller is going to be the sternal end or medial end. The one that's flatter will be the acromial end. Now on that acromial end, pretty much all of this surface is the acromial facet. So that bit there is going to articulate with the acromion on the scapula, just like that. So there we have the acromial facet joining in to articulate there with the acromion of the scapula. So that's the acromial facet. It's a relatively smooth bit here on that lateral end of the clavicle. Now, in contrast, on the sternal end, you do have a facet, but it's not this entire surface. So what we've got, and hopefully if I shade it, we can see it a little more clearly. What we've got is a smooth bit just here. Now, part of it's on the inferior surface, and part of it's on the medial surface. So it's kind of L-shaped more than just being one face or the other. So that's the sternal facet there. It's not this whole sternal end. The reason for that uh, we can see here, if we grab hold of a manubrium and get the sternum, sorry, get the clavicle to articulate with the sternum there in one of the notches that it articulates with, you can see that it doesn't fit completely uh, like you know articulating complete with the complete facet like that the facet on the sternal end of the clavicle quite small and only part of it really articulates there okay so that's the sternal facet there and then the other structures we want to look at are on an in seen on an inferior view so this time we've, we're looking at an inferior view of the clavicle we've come over towards the lateral or acromial end and we have here a tubercle, that's the conoid tubercle. And then from that tubercle, heading towards the uh, acromial facet, we have a trapezoid line. Now that's, uh, it's a bit clearer if I cover that up and make it a little less bright. So the tubercle here, and then the line here. Now the line on this one is not really a, a thin line, it's more of a kind of roughened area that extends from here right over towards the anterior surface here. So that's the trapezoid line. Now then while we're here, let's have a look at the scapula. So with the scapula, we've got a f uh, quite a few more features than we have on the clavicle to look at. Firstly, with the scapula, we're looking here at an anterior view of a right scapula. Now the scapula, we, we can always tell which is medial, medial and lateral because this bit here is, has to be on the lateral aspect. So just remember that. This has to be pointing laterally. And this depression here is anterior. And if you're looking at a posterior point of view, you can't miss this, which is the spine. So you know that's posterior. You know where my thumb is here is lateral. So you can tell which way it should be sitting. Now, to begin with though, we've got at the bottom an inferior angle. And then, coming up from the inferior angle up the medial side is the medial border. Now remember the vertebrae are going to be just here, so this is the medial border. Sometimes people mix that up, they just think, oh yeah, that's lateral. No, that's got to be medial. This bit here has to be lateral. Then we've got a lateral border out this side. So inferior angle, medial border lateral border. Then we have the acromion. Now the acromion is quite superior here and it's the bit that has a facet here for the clavicle to articulate with. The acromion is here between my thumb and forefinger. So that's the acromion, that bit there. Then we've got the spine of the scapula. Now we can see that from this superior point of view, it's just here. But if we have turn around to look at a posterior point of view, Here's the spine of the scapula here. Now it's continuous with the acromion. Remember the acromion is this more lateral part 
spine is where it's thinner, tapers to a point medially. Then we have the supraspinous fossa. So this depression that's just above the spine of the scapula in here is the supraspinous fossa and the supraspinatus muscle fits in that. Inferior to the spine, we have the infraspinous fossa, which is this whole area here, and the infraspinatus muscle fits in that. On the anterior surface, we have another fossa, the subscapular fossa, and the subscapularis muscle fits in that one. On the lateral aspect, we've already seen it, but now we're going to name it. That's the glenoid cavity, sometimes called glenoid fossa. That's where the head of the humerus is going to articulate, and remember, that has to be pointing laterally. Now, just superior to that, we have the coracoid process here. That's an important muscular and ligament, uh, ligamentous attachment site. 